when the, you know, stuff really hits the fan here, these banks are not going to allow people to have access to whatever cash that they think they have. And, and, and it's going to make it much, much worse, I think. Um, but again, this is the only worst case scenario. And I always think of things in those terms because you have to be prepared. Everyone listening to this should go out and buy Sun Tzu, The Art of War, read that thoroughly and understand those concepts and incorporate those into their life. Now, what you talked about in facing the reality that even money that you stick into a savings account, because that was the old traditional you know, wisdom standby is keep your money, be a saver, be a furious saver, uh, don't overspend, don't over debt, but just save up and save up. But as you point out, uh, those savings, whether it's in a savings account or whether it's in a checking account or whether it's in a certificate of deposit or even treasury bonds is not really money and it's not really there waiting for you. It's been off and lent off to somewhere else. So you've got the risk of you're dependent now on on the system and on the viability of that bank and the counterparty risk associated with that. When you contrast that with holding physical silver, uh, what are the options that you think people should most seriously consider as far as storing uh, physical silver? Because it does get to be a bit bulky, unlike, for example, gold or some other things that are extremely uh, dense, uh, small volume stores of value. Silver has some size to it. Um, what are some uh, options you would c encourage people to look into as far as storing their physical silver that they would that they would invest in? Well, I would say this. Uh, number one is, and I know a lot of people do this, and I think it's a big mistake here. Do not keep this stuff in your home uh, unless you live, you you know you have an armed guard there or something like that. I would suggest this. If, if most of these companies here that will, like, for example, uh, you know, you can go online and find it, many of them, reputable companies, they'll store this stuff for you. Um, and there's also other safe places. I'm more than certain here and most people's homes will, are also secure. I would not keep these things in a safe deposit box at a bank. Um, that I, I, don't, I don't trust these institutions at all. And let me just say this as well with regard to banks. I think if people have the opportunity, they should not keep their money in a commercial bank at all. Uh, if they have to, they should be keeping it in a credit union. Um, I think there is a less counterparty risk there as well. I also want to say this, going back to what you were saying about savings accounts. Anyone today has to understand this. We have a runaway Federal Reserve that is so hell-bent on keeping the system propped up that they're paying people negative returns. Anyone that has an interest in the account here in the United States is earning less interest in the rate of inflation, so they're in reality being robbed, blind, and this cash is being redistributed to the upper 1% of, of society through the mechanism of the equity market. So that's another reason not to keep your cash in the bank, uh, in one of these institutions, uh, and, and hope you're going to earn any kind of interest on it because it's just not going to work for you. Um, I think that's an important concept to understand. Yeah, can you walk us through that? I know that we've had a few other guests who have uh, touched on that subject as well, but basically that your money as it's sitting in a low interest bearing savings or checking account is actually losing value due to dilution of the purchasing power of the dollar because of the inflationary practices of money printing by the Fed. And so in a sense, even though the number of dollars that are in your account maybe flat or slightly increasing the value is going down it's being drained out the back door it's being drained out through inflation I mean, with these, these numbers that they're, they're force feeding us are garbage we all know that this is not real we have a federal reserve that is artificially suppressing interest rates and they're artificially suppressing interest rates for many many reasons but the main main reason is this they want to keep the mechanism going, and that is nothing but a wealth transfer. Stealing from the middle class is being decimated, absolutely decimated. They don't care about the lower class of people because they got no cash at all. The middle class has the bulk of the money. They're finding every way that they can to redistribute that wealth or steal it from the middle class and push it to the upper echelon of society. We're watching something unfold here, and we have been for quite a while. That is absolutely epic and is going on right into people's noses, and that is a creation of a two-tier society. We are not going to have a middle class in a few years. This next crash, which is coming in the equity market, when? When the debt bubble bursts, in my opinion. We're going to see a crash here that is going to make everyone before it look like child's play. Um, it's going to leave the middle class absolutely decimated. 
um, and the rich will become monumentally richer. Uh, and, uh, and that's really the scheme that's been going on for quite a while. And, and unfortunately, um, I don't think there's a way out uh, other than people understanding the mechanism. So once they understand the mechanism, one remedy that you've proposed is that people get into uh, uh, backing out of dollars and instead uh, acquiring hard assets such as physical silver. Is there any, it certainly is attractive and um, enticing for folks these days as they see the Dow continuing to march on and set new highs and new highs as it did in the late 90s and so on, um, to think, boy, they're they're really missing out. I mean, people who've invested in in uh, hard assets like metals over the last three years or so are seeing, you know, multi-year lows in those and are seeing multi-year highs in, in the um, broader market. And uh, they ask the question, and it's a fair question, is even if the system's going to break down at, on some day, uh, is, there, is there any room for people to participate in any respect in the stocks and equities market uh, to make a, a short-term gain that they could then turn around and put into hard assets? And I think you've got some experience in that regard. Yeah, I do, I do it every day. <laughs> I think that's the truth. Um, yeah, absolutely there is here. Play, this, play the game here. But, you know, it's, it's a risky game. I mean, people cannot just say, hey, you know what, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to start trading derivatives. You know, you, you can't do this. People have to understand how to, how to work that system as well. And, uh, and the, if, you, if people don't have the, you know, I'm trying my, my hardest here to make it as easy as, po as possible for people to capitalize on this. But the truth of the matter is you've got to put your own work in here and your own research. You have to have your own understanding. The interesting thing about trading is this. You could take two people, put them side by side, um, and you know each one of them will develop their own way of understanding the market and their own way to capitalize on it. Um, most people who try this will fail. That's, that's the truth because of a lot of reasons. One of them is self-control, not understanding how to play the game. It's complicated. So um, if people do want to get involved here in the equity markets, there's no doubt about it. You can do that on both ends, meaning the long side, betting the market will go up, and on the short end, too, uh, meaning your betting it will go down. But before people do this, they need to you know, read several books, start a, uh, a practice account, prove to themselves that they can make this work using a practice account over a several-month period, and then maybe try to get in here and do this. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's a viable option, there's nothing about it. But again, people need to be careful. What would you recommend as some, if people really are ser serious about wanting to educate themselves in that area, what are some either books and or online resources that you think that they should look into? Well, I think number one, and it sounds kind of silly, is the, the Trading for Dummies series. I, I think it's great. Um, it, it goes over all the basics that people need to know about uh, how, to, how to trade options. Um, and once people grasp those concepts, the next step would be to open up a practice account. A lot of, of the, um, like for example, Think or Swim or one of these other ones here, they offer pr uh, practice accounts where people can use play money. Use the play cash or play money, uh, you know, work on a system that works for you. And then once you again are confident that you can make this work, then you start with small amounts of cash that you can afford to lose. That's a key here. Don't ever jump into this market with cash you cannot afford to lose because the chances are at the beginning that you will lose uh, until you, you know, make this work. And then no matter what you do, this is something else I want people to understand. I don't care if you're a computer algorithm. I don't care if you're the greatest trader who's ever lived. You will have losing trades. and You have to understand that you need to embrace that and, and realize it's part of the cost of doing business. So don't expect to go out there and, and, and place 10 trades and all 10 are going to win. If you, you would be doing phenomenal if half of these win, if you're able to cut your losses right at the beginning and maximize your gains. This is part of the trick to learning how to, how to play this market. And uh, you yourself offer some uh, online resources for people who want to get updates and information and insight on a regular basis. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Sure, absolutely. My website is called TradersChoice.net. I do post my positions right there. Uh, for people that are really looking to capitalize on these, they should think about joining my, my business day market report where I actually go over specifics of the trades. I tell people my strike price, 
um, my expiration date, and I follow it all the way through um, with my subscribers uh, and in hope to that we, all, we can all capitalize on it. And as you think about this broader topic, Greg, of the financial markets, the financial system, the average middle income uh, family that's trying to find a way to protect themselves, are there any uh, advice that I haven't asked you for that come to mind that you'd like to leave with our viewers? Well, no, I think you pretty much covered, I think, the basics here, but I just want people to really become educated on the system and how it's rigged against them. Because once you understand those concepts, you can come up with a strategy to defeat it. And that's really what you want to do here, is try to come up with a strategy to beat the system. And it's really not hard. Just do the opposite of what the central bankers are telling you to do, pretty much, and you'll be fine. Well, Greg Manorino of TradersChoice.net, we thank you so much for joining us here on Reluctant Preppers and giving us your insight and education and advice to our audience. I appreciate being here. Let's do it again. Thanks, Greg. Thank you.